Hi, good day. I am pleased to share with you my knowledge and teaching experience in the teaching field. Thank you. Please tell us about yourself. What are your interests and hobbies? Thank you very much for the opportunity given to be interviewed for this teaching position role. I am Javis Mensah Barton, a Ghanaian by belt and a proud holder of a Bachelor of Science degree in Biology Education as my major and Chemistry Education as my minor. I have four years of teaching experience at Rose Chuchie Senior High School, a suburb school in the Ashanti region of Ghana. I already have the experience to excel in this role. I have strong interpersonal skills. I am confident whilst teaching and I'm calm and composed in challenging situations. I am a teacher that has a solid track of success. For example, where I am currently teaching, I successfully turned around an underperforming class to perform better. When they were assessed at the end of the examination, they were found 20% better than the former. I create a certain and engaging lesson plan and I assess the needs of my students and provide them with the support needed to reach their full potential. The skills I have are perfect for the role of a teacher. I possess excellent collaborative skills, which enables me to work with other teachers so that the school can achieve their goal. I am highly creative, and my presentation skills are flexible and adaptable to suit the needs of my students and the classes I teach. My unique selling point is that I create a sense of community in the classroom. I make sure there is mutual respect between the students and myself. The students have rules to follow and each student contributes positively to the learning and developmental journey of the other. I aspire to create a student-centered learning approach in which students are in their driving seats of their own. Thank you. What motivated you to become a teacher for the subject for which you are applying? All right. Um, from growing, I come from a, a town that is a town that is involved in farming very much. So I was exposed to plants and animals. I used to go to farm with my parents and I'm exposed to plants very much. So I developed interest in plants and animals. Then notwithstanding, when I was climbing the educational ladder, I came to realize that I have much interest in science. And to be specific, the part of science that deals with living things, that is plants and animals, became my higher strength because I've been exposed to since infancy. So that brought about the development of the interest in biology. And I've perceived it up to this time, which whenever I stand anywhere, more especially in the classroom, to teach, everyone that learns from me becomes very glad because the desire and passion has let me develop or grow up to this far. Tell us about your involvement in extracurricular activities that you could coach or supervise. Right now, I am part of the sports committee in our school. The school that just recently won the Super, Super Zonas Miller competitions in the Ashanti region of Ghana. Because of my highly interest in sporting activities like athletics, football, I voluntarily joined them. And seeing the eagerness and the interest and the technical know-how, they also made me part of the committee, sports committee. Thank you. What subjects have you taught and at what age levels? I've taught biology and general science in Osei Trutri Senior High School at grades 9, 10. But I've been teaching biology in grades 11 and 12. Right now, I'm teaching biology in a grade 12 class. Thank you. How do you prepare to teach your lessons? And what do your lesson plans include? All right. During lesson preparation, I am based on only three pointers. The first pointer is what do I want my students to know? The objectives. And objectives must be smart. 
SMART is an acronym that stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. After getting my set of objectives, the second pointer is how do I teach my students the methodology? Students in Ghana here, our classes are made up of mixed abilities. So I make sure I use diverse methodologies or pedagogies that will suit the various abilities of students so that they can comprehend whatever I'm teaching them. So sometimes I use the kinesthetic approach, sometimes I use the audio approach, sometimes I use the visualization approach, and so many methodologies to teach my students. S six, talk about two teaching strategies or methods that you effectively use in your classroom. Thank you very much. I use the cooperative learning approach. Basically, putting students together uh, in groups, or however you will do it, sometimes small group conferences, sometimes in the form of a project, and letting students come together to learn a particular concept. In that sense, you the teacher serve as a facilitator, and the students come together to share their knowledge, and then they learn what you are teaching them. They come out with something from what they learned, and you the teacher as a facilitator, and you polish it and make them success. Secondly, um, the methodology I use is the differentiation method. Differentiation basically means, as I said earlier, my classrooms in Ghana are mixed up of mixed abilities. So they are not of equal strength. And for that matter, it will be very prudent as a teacher, I put the students based on their abilities. And when I, I put them into such groups, I try as much as possible to approach them and then help them to curtail or solve whatever problem that they are going through. So differentiation and cooperative methods has been one approach I used very much. When someone enters your classroom, describe the learning activities in which the students are engaged. Thank you very much. For this part, sometimes when students are entering the class, I stand in front of the door and then welcome my students. Sometimes in Ghana here, I used fist pumps, sometimes I used handshake, and then I smile to them to welcome them so beautifully. And then as they are entering the classroom, I hand to them some piece of papers with a work on it, so that when they sit, they engage in that work. And I tell we term that as bell work. And in the process of the students engaging in the bell work, I used that small time to mark the register of the students. You know, students are such that when you leave them alone without doing or engaging them in that small time, they can be very chaos. And in that sense, when the beginning of the class is in chaos, it will affect you, the teacher, in the, in the, in the progress of the class. So I hand over to them bell work. After marking the register, I use some two, three minutes to discuss what they're doing in the bell work. And then we zoom into that day's activity. When I start the day's activity, I introduce it to them nicely and I make sure that I, I, I introduce the lesson in such a way that it becomes so interesting that in the course of the introduction, students will be yelling to even start the work on their own. I am not a teacher that talk, talk, talk. I am a student-centered approach kind of teacher. So after introducing it, I leave everything to my students and I serve as a facilitator, facilitating discussions or the activities they are doing and make sure it becomes a success. What methods do you use to evaluate your students' progress? Basically, I use the formative and then the summative approach. Formative, in the course of our studies, the kind of questions I ask, uh, soliciting the information from them and giving them exercises are all part of the formative assessment. When we are done with our lecture or when we are done with our semester, we, we also get to know that whether what we taught was learned by the students. So we set and we give them a whole set of questions and then we examine them finally and that is the summative assessment. So basically I use the formative and then the summative mode of assessment. If you use technology in your teaching, describe how you incorporate into your teaching. Describe any experiences you have with a smart board. Actually, I do inculcate technology in my teaching. For instance, 
and use the projector and then the laptop very much over here. I am a science teacher, specifically a biology teacher. I remember when I was teaching life processes of living things, um, I spoke to my students and then I made mention of some unicellular organisms like amoeba, paramecium, and then the rest. Since they are unicellular, students can see them. They are microscopic and it's hardly you see them with your naked eye. So with the help of my projector, sometimes when we were describing the movement of a unicellular organism like amoeba, it will be prudent that I project it on the board so that the students will see amoeba moving by itself and the process they used in moving. So I inculcate um, that in my, in my studies very much or in my activities, the projector and the laptop. Um, for smart board, it is not common over here in Ghana, but some classrooms, some schools use, which respective to my school, I wasn't fortunate to get access to the smart board. Fortunately for me, when I was at the university, I was a student journalist. So in our course of our broadcasting, sometimes we are used to the smart board. So I learned a lot and I've been using it way back at the university, which I know how to use it. But it's unfortunate I didn't get access to smart board where I'm teaching. Wherever I get an advantage or I get an access to a smart board, I can use it and use it very well. Thank you. All right. If you have students who are noisy or not attentive, share ways you gain your, their attention without interrupting the lesson. Thank you very much. Students that are noisy or unattentive, what I do is I use the proximity control. Proximity control is a method of reducing the possible distance between the student and you, the teacher. Uh, with the attention of creating the awareness of the student that classes or lectures is ongoing or lessons is ongoing. In that sense, when you get closer to the teacher, the student, the student will get to know you are around and stop whatever he or she is doing. Sometimes too, when I realize upon using that proximity control, the student is still disturbing. I write something in the form of a note. When I reach the student's desk, I put it on the desk. When the student picks it, whilst instructions is ongoing, when the student picks it and reads, nature being what it is, the student will calm down and then respond to whatever is written on the note. So proximity control is one key. Secondly, well, sometimes to try as much as possible to explain things explicitly because when students understand what you are teaching them, the content, they don't disturb. When students disturb, when they are confused, when they are bold, and when they are idle. So as a teacher, I try to be more proactive than being reactive. Those that are becoming confused, I explain things to them so that they, they are able to understand very well. Those that are becoming bold, I hand over to them some manipulatives or instructional materials to get them engaged. And those that are feeling idle, I put them in small group conferences or peer-to-peer -to, -peer to take away their idleness. So these are the approaches I use. Thank you. Describe the most difficult problem you have had to deal with a teacher and how did you resolve that problem? Thank you. I think this comes to the same question I answered previously. One difficult problem I faced was a student who was used to talking, talking, talking. Anytime he interrupts the class, I tried so many approaches, it wasn't going through. So one time I told him I would, I would inform the parents, I would call the parents and inform them about the behavior he's putting across in the school. When we were about closing, the guy, the student was very worried. I called the parents to the father. But when I called the father, I spoke to the father about the good things the award has been doing in the school, and the father was so happy. The student, thinking that I will report him to the parents, felt so worried when getting closer to the house. But upon reaching home, the parents applauded him for the good works he's doing in school. And when he get back, when he came back to school the next morning, he rushed to my table and was wondering how, upon all the actions he has been putting, the bad nature of the actions, I still uh, rewarded him positively. Henceforth, he stopped everything he was doing and promised that he will live right. So I was able to conquer or solve that problem through these tactics I used as a teacher. Give an example to show that you are a flexible person and that you can make changes to your teaching and methods. Yes, as I said earlier, that sometimes I put students into groups by doing all those things. Sometimes when I realize this method of approaching the cooperative is not working, I try the differentiation method. And um, the student that was disturbing in class day in and day out, upon using this method, I was able to solve that problem. So all these answered questions even speak or testif testify that I'm a teacher that is able to you know, deal with difficult situations. Thank you.